So today I'm gonna to talk about slide layer properties and why you should always reset your slide to initial state. Now let's imagine I am a slide within Storyline and you can interact with my face and do different things like if you click my eyes, I have glasses. If you click my hair, I'm wearing a wig. Uh, you can make me put on a tie. I should have put this on before the wig. I'm wearing a jacket. So as you interact with me, your slide, and interact with objects that have different states, the states change. So now I have a glasses state and maybe a wig state and maybe a jacket state. Now I, as a slide in Storyline, have properties that default to automatically decide, which either chooses one of the other two properties, which is resume save state or reset to initial state. Because I have all these custom states that you're updating as you're clicking on me, Storyline will automatically decide that I need to resume the save state because you're showing fancy states on objects on the screen, on my slide. So if you were to leave me this slide and go to another slide over there and then come back to me, I stay exactly the same. And that's because Storyline automatically decided that it should resume the save state. But if I reset the slide to its initial state, now I'm back to normal. Now I'm back to the way that I started. And this is the way that I prefer to set up slides in Storyline because if you have too many slides that resume the save state, it can cause problems with SCORM 1.2. Now, let me switch back to my resume save state version of my slide. Now I'm back to automatically decide mode, so Storyline's gonna remember my save state. Let's imagine you're an LMS and your brain is SCORM 1.2. Your brain has an easy time remembering one version of me with red hair, glasses, and a jacket, and a tie, but let's imagine there were a lot of slides that it had to remember all the information for. Now there are seven of me. So you as the LMS, your brain being SCORM 1.2 is like, whoa, 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 whoa. There's a lot of information there. And in some instances, too much information for SCORM 1.2 to be able to handle. So if you can't remember your brain, SCORM 1.2, all of these different states that I've resumed, then you're gonna break. And the LMS and SCORM 1.2 is going to have an issue with the communication back and forth resuming slides and course progression tracking. Variables could break, all sorts of things could go wrong. That's why I always suggest you reset to initial state. Let's go ahead and dive into Storyline so I can show you what I mean. So I quickly threw together a course using Storyline 360 and the content library. To access slide properties, click the cog on your base layer. Now here's the part that we wanna look at. When revisiting, automatically decide. This is the Storyline default. What this does is it either chooses to resume the save state or to reset to initial state automatically. As you'll remember from the intro video, if you have a bunch of objects with states, Storyline will automatically choose to resume the save state. If you don't, it will reset to the initial state. I always choose reset to initial state because if you don't, it can break your course in an LMS. Let's dig in. So I've launched the course in SCORM Cloud and opened the JavaScript console so I can start testing things out. Here I'm calling SCORM call LMS get value suspend data. This is how Storyline in all rapid authoring tools store information about your course in the LMS through a suspend data string. So here I'm just getting that value. If I hit enter, right now I have nothing. Okay, that's cool. Let me go ahead and click next and see what I can do. Let's call it again and still nothing. Let me click on some of these icons. There we go, now I have a layer and things are checking off. It's not the most pretty thing in the world. I just put it together quickly, but let's see what we got now. So here I've jumped out to an articulate article. To overcome the unfortunate limits imposed by earlier versions of SCORM, Storyline compresses suspend data. As a result, you probably won't exceed the threshold even if your LMS imposes one. Note, because suspend string data is compressed to allow for more robust storage, the suspend data string in an LMS debug log isn't human readable. That is, you won't be able to decipher it. So back in our course, here is the suspend data that the Storyline article was telling us about. It's unreadable to humans. Now, what's important about SCORM 1.2 is that this can only have a specific length. So if I type in the suspend data.length, 
Now I'm getting the number of characters. Now I have 208 characters in my suspend data string. Now let's go back and look at the article one more time. Now, if I'm in SCORM 1.2, which is the de facto, even though there are later and greater standards, this is what everyone uses. There is a limit of 496 characters. So if we ever get above that threshold of 496 characters, stuff can start to break. Here in only one slide, I got to 208. So I'm gonna pause real quick. Now I'm through three slides and my suspense string is up to 926. Now, multiple choice questions actually store a little more than you might expect. I'm gonna get this one right. I'm gonna submit it. So it went from 926 on this slide to 1213. So almost 400 characters stored for one freeform question. And it was a multiple choice question, but this would happen for other freeforms as well. So if you think about the limit of 4,096, and we're getting almost 400 characters for one freeform interaction, well, if I'm automatically deciding on 10 or 11 freeform questions in my course, then I'm gonna hit that threshold pretty quickly, and then my course is just gonna function hopefully okay in the LMS. I don't like leaving things up to hope. I'm gonna fast forward some more and play around with this and get that suspense string number really high, so stick around. Okay, one more thing that I wanna point out is I'm purposefully leaving pop-ups open on each of these slides. That way, when we exceed the suspend data, I can show you that things start to break. I'm on maybe my 15th slide of the course, 4,088. I'm gonna close this course. Remember I'm on the multiple choice question. So I've relaunched the course. I'm hoping that it should still say 4,088. I am on the right multiple choice question. I'm gonna get the data length and it's at 4,088. So if I store any more data, I'm gonna go over the 4,096 threshold and this thing's gonna break. So now remember I'm on this multiple choice question. I'm gonna click Submit, continue, and my course is still working, but now it still says 4088. Let me exit out of the course again. So here I've resumed, and now it's on this question again. I'm gonna submit, great, correct feedback. Let's see what a suspense string. Now my suspense string dropped to 1429. I'm gonna get this one right, continue. Moved on to the another multiple choice question, and now it's at 1781. So I've lost some data in there. Uh-oh. Let's see what happens. It's at 2000, so I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna go back to the end. And, oh, look, my layers are gone. My states are gone. It doesn't remember any of this stuff. Uh, let's come back in here. Layers are gone, states, have go states are gone. I'm gonna go ahead and exit again. And that's because Storyline's trying its best and the LMS is trying its best to crunch that suspend data into 4,096 characters. And in some times, some instances, some of that gets lost in translation. And it's kind of random which part gets lost in translation. So it could be a worse part than you saw here and your course could just not resume. Now, if you have like a huge course that's an hour long, somebody takes 30 some minutes and then they come back and wanna resume and because you chose automatically decide, they don't have the resume functionality because it's breaking in their LMS, well, that's a huge pain in the ass. So I always, always reset to initial state and everything will work beautifully in your LMS, and I will make next week's tutorial a demonstration on how I set courses up to use Reset to Initial State and why I like it so much better. So hopefully that was informative. Uh, thanks for your time.